And it should be everybody in the waiting room. One more is joining now. I do not have anybody else in the waiting room. I will go ahead and start the recording. Excellent, thank you. Okay, it's recording. All right, it is um, Thursday, January 27th, uh, 7.02 p.m. Uh, this is a meeting of the Bolton uh, Select Board. Uh, tonight's meeting begins with a hearing on a complaint um, of a uh, determination of a nuisance or dangerous dog. I will now open the hearing. It being Thursday, January 27, 2022, at or after 7 p.m., pursuant to the provisions of General Laws, Chapter 140, Section 157, and the Town Bylaws, I am opening a public hearing concerning a possible violation of General Laws, Chapter 140, and Section 110 of the Town Bylaws regarding a dog named Schnatzi, uh, owned by Miriam Meyer at 22 Kettle Hole Road, Road in Bolton, Massachusetts. Ms. Meyer was notified of this hearing by delivery of a notice on Jan January 12th, 2022. And this notice shall be incorporated and made part of the record. I'd like to now go over uh, the general order of uh, proceedings here. Uh, first, we will hear from the complainant, Peter Novak's on the basis of the alleged violation. Next, we will hear from the town's animal control officer as any to any investigation she has conducted regarding the alleged violation. After uh, the animal control officer, we will hear from the dog's owner. The owner or its counsel may present a response to the allegations and the ACO's investigation and may ask questions of the complainant and the ACO. Then we will entertain testimony from any other witnesses with respect to the alleged violation. The select board will then have an opportunity to ask questions with respect to the alleged violation and solicit the input of the ACO, the ACO being the animal control officer. The board will then deliberate on the information presented and consider whether to continue this hearing or render a decision. All testimony and questions should be addressed to the chair, not to other speakers. Uh, all testimony in this hearing will be under oath under penalties of perjury. So this is a legal proceeding. Anybody who intends to or wishes to speak at any point during this hearing, um, we need to swear you in. We're going to swear in all the uh, part, possible participants uh, early in the meeting, uh, at this point in the meeting, uh, as opposed to doing them individually as they speak. So if, if there's any possibility that someone may want to speak um, at this point, I need you to raise your hand, raise your right hand, so that I may uh, properly swear you in. Uh, does, that, does that include counsel as well? Uh, it wouldn't hurt. Okay. Happy to do it. Okay, thank you. Um, to all those who are planning to speak this evening, I, I see, let me just make sure I've got Ms. Meyer, uh, yes. Mr. Gubellini. Yes. Is that correct? And yes, I don't sir. know who, who that is with you. That's that's um, Miriam Meyer next to me. Oh, okay, Miriam Meyer, all right. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, I have another, so I have another, person named Miriam Meyer presenting here. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. That's a, um, uh, a dog trainer who's uh, in the Meyer home tonight and on a computer provided by Miriam Meyer. So the, the name reads Meyer, but she can identify herself for you if that's, or I can for you. And her name is Brenda Bear. Okay. Uh, Ms. Bear, you've unmuted yourself. Um, yes. Sorry. You to participate? Okay. And um, I don't see Mr. Kovacs. Oh, there you are, I'm sorry. You're right there. And is your right hand raised? Thank you. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I yes, do. I do. All right, thank you. So rec when recognized uh, by the chair, please state your name and address for the record, everybody. Um, 
So I ask now that Mr. Kovacs come forward and present his complaint. Uh, my name is Peter Kovacs. I'm at 14 Kettle Hole Road in Bolton. And um, simply uh, as I, I don't know if anyone has received the letter that I sent uh, to the town. Uh, it basically explained uh, the situation uh, where you know, we had there were four incidents that I had written down, uh, three of which were vicious and attacks, and two of them inflicted bodily harm on two different dogs and um, and subsequent trauma. Um, I just, you know, this uh, last incident that uh, occurred, I, I can't remember exactly when. I'm sorry, a uh, few weeks back at least, um, Christmas time area, and. Um, the uh, once it happened that time again, I, I just became a concerned um, citizen, a concerned resident. Uh, I was um, I regret that I didn't report uh, the incident that happened years ago, and uh, the uh, one of the other um, neighbors that uh, sent me a uh, the the vet bills and uh, her a statement. You know, it's not a sworn statement, but it's an email statement, and she she just she apologized for not being able to. Um, do this formally, but um, it is what it is right now. But anyways, um, we both regret that we didn't report it. Uh, nobody, I don't think anybody likes to report uh, neighbors. Uh, we want to be neighborly and, and enjoy each other's company and um, in the neighbor and, and, and in the neighborhood. And, uh, you know, so we, we don't want to do that, especially when the person says they're going to, um, it was said, actually it was said from um, Ms. Meyer to uh, this woman, Lisa Dion, uh, a, a former neighbor uh, said that uh, you know she was you know badly, very badly uh, bitten, uh, needed surgery. Um, it was uh, it was pretty tough shape. The dog was in rough shape, and um, and uh, basically that was that's all that that took place there. And Marion uh, told uh, Lisa that they uh, would keep the dog in the back and it would be chained up. Um, you know, I don't know if that, you know, those are just her words. I don't know if that's, that happened or not. Um, but in the case on the last incident, oh, then there was an incident with my dog a few years back and it, um, my dog happened to go into their, you know, into their yard, um, playfully wanting, you know, just, it's a smaller dog, 23 pounds. Um, I don't know how many, how heavy the German shepherd is, uh, Shotzi, but, um, Anyways, uh, Toby went in next door and um, the uh, Shotzi had, uh, attacked Toby, had it, uh, I took a you know, big bite out of him or whatever, bite into him. And, um, and then somehow the, and Toby got away or loose and, and ran towards our neighbor, I mean, towards our, our yard. And uh, thankfully I was there and I was able to get him, you know, get in between and, and, and fight off the dog because he was just chasing my dog down uh, pretty badly. Um, the dog, our dog did have uh, bite marks and it was really, it was in trauma for at least a week. It was a really frightening experience um, for, for all of us, uh, uh, myself and my, my daughter as well. And then this one and, just, and this most recent uh, event was uh, Christmas time. And um, the, uh, the uh, Shotzi um, apparently came through I don't know who made the dent or whatever, but there must've been a railing that was uh, busted and it jumps, you know, it, it, it pushed its way through and chased after my dog. We were just playing out in the yard and it came into our yard, um, attacked uh, Toby, went after Toby and my, my son thankfully was playing with him right there and was able to uh, hit him off with a, um, um, with a, a ball launcher, a dog ball launcher. And um, so the dog, um, ran, you know, basically ran away. Um, that's the, that's the part that's, um, the dangerous part. The nuisance part is, um, in the past several years, um, the dog, um, it's, is an open, it's an open, um, railing fence. I don't know, like a pool fence. It's uh, maybe four feet high. Um, and it's 20 feet away from our property and we're always out there. And every time we're out there, um, the Shotzi, the German Shepherd is running up and down the fence line, uh, banging up against it, um, barking. Uh, just, it's just a scary, it's, it's a frightening thing to be close to. And um, 
anyways, we, we kind of live with this for, for many, many years as, you know, as neighbors. And um, I don't, you know, I think Miriam works and the kids are off to school and the dog's out there all day. Um, so it's just not a pleasant, um, it's not pleasant to be the neighbor of this, uh, of this, of this situation. Um, so those are the two things um, that I want to bring forward. Um, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't know if you're looking for any kind of, you know, things that I'm looking for a resolution or not, but and I'll leave that to, uh, to the chair. All right. Are, are there any other details about the most recent incident that you think are pertinent and you, you want to bring forward? I mean, you mentioned some of the things. I just want to make sure we. Uh, um, well, picture. I mean, I, I, I mean, I'll, I'll get a little bit more detail. The dog, I mean, uh, the dog was attacked. My dog was, um, you know, basically attacked. And thankfully, there were no, um, uh, you know, there no uh, visible bite wounds. Uh, so thankfully, my son was there, that, you know, to break that up very quickly. Um, and right afterwards, uh, Miriam and I, we, we, we met. I mean, um, you know, as a neighbor, I, like I said, I, I, I feel badly for, um, for them as well. I mean, nobody wants to be um, the person um, accused of having a dog that's attacking other dogs. And, and, you know, I'm very, I try to be very sensitive about this. And, and of course, I didn't say anything, but, but this time it was different. Um, I just, uh, I was the dog, you know, busting through the fence like that. And it just reminded me of every day in the past many years that I have been listening to the dog and, and hearing it back and forth. So it's, it's been, it's been a very, uh, a very uh, uncomfortable um, scenario for us to be in living here and always being in our backyard and having to, you know, I would say 80% of the time the dog is in the backyard and uh, it's always barking when we're out there. And even at night, sometimes it, you know, she would, it would be out late. Um, I'm not sure what their, their, their home policy is with the dog. We have not heard the dog since. The dog has not been out in the backyard since. I know Miriam has repaired, uh, you know, quickly repaired the fence. She also put, I think, chicken wire or something to, to, uh, uh, to make it a, even a more safe um, barrier. The unfortunate part is that it's still very visible and it doesn't change the, um, the dynamics um, as far as I'm concerned. And the, and the fear is, is there. I mean, my wife was very, my, my wife is traumatized thinking that we bring children in here, little toddlers and so forth. And, and if this ever, would this dog ever attack a, a toddler? And so that, those thoughts, you know, go through our mind. And uh, anyways, like I said, we just felt to, that to be a responsible resident was to make sure that we bring this forth and, and uh, bring it to the town's attention and uh, let the town decide what, uh, what's, what's the best thing to do here for us as neighbors and for other neighbors. So that's it. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, we will. Um... Mr. Chair, may I just ask um, sure. that uh, I know Mr. Kovacs referenced um, a letter he had submitted. I don't know if yeah. all the selectmen have that in their possession yep. um, and yeah, make sure it. that that, that is, is part the, of the it, record. It's in the selectmen's packets. Okay, very good. All right, uh, at this point, we will be hearing from Phyllis Tower, the animal control officer. Phyllis? Yep. Um, so on December 26th, I got a call from the uh, regional dispatch that uh, Miriam Meyer um, had called to say that her dog had gotten to the neighbor's yard um, and had an altercation with the dog. Um, I called the person whose dog got attacked, which was Peter Kovacs. I spoke with him to get his side of the story because he was the one that was out with the dog. Um, he did state that in order to prevent the dog attack that his son had um, stopped the dog with the ball thrower and that um, German Shepherd returned back home again. The following day on December 27th, early in the afternoon, I went to speak with Miriam. Um, we went out back and talked about the fence. Um, and I, I asked her what had happened. She said the first time she realized anything had happened, her dog was in the backyard, fence in the pool area. Her daughter looked out the window and said, there's a dog in the driveway, which is the front yard. And she says, well, whose dog's out there? Ours is in the backyard. Um, so it was, 
shocking to her to realize the dog wasn't where she had left it. Um, she said that the son had come over and explained what had happened. And um, so after that, um, Ms. Meyer and I walked around the fence in the backyard or was able to view all the fence. And it is a pool fence, um, perhaps aluminum. And it does, it's around the pool to keep, because it's an underground pool, it's not a dog fence. It could be appropriate for the right kind of dog. Um, however, the vertical rods on the fence are compromised, not just the area where the dog went out, but there's several places, whether it's from the dog or something else, I really don't know. Um, Ms. Meyer wanted to know what my opinion was. Um, we both made suggestions back and forth. And um, about a half an hour later, um, we were done. She said, in order to keep the dog secure until something is um, physically put up, she would leash walk the dog in the backyard. Some of the things we talked about was she has some stockade fence on one side, um, whether it's to continue that all the way around. However, this is a tough time of year to do that. Um, she had a good suggestion of hanging up a tarp. There's actually some black fabric that they make for that. Um, that will stop the view of the dog. However, the dog's going to still hear and smell the other dog playing next door and still be excited to try to get out. Uh, we also discussed the pool gates that are held together um, with a bungee gourd. If the dog pushed on it, they'd, it would push far enough to get through it. Um, that is not how the dog appeared to have gotten out. It appears to have gotten out between some rungs. Um, so the dog, like I said, when we left, the answer was that she would walk the dog on a handheld leash until something was done about the fence to make sure it was secure. Okay, um, thank you. Um, at this point, we'd like to hear from Ms. Meyer or her representative. You're muted. So Mr. Chairman, my, my name is Peter Rubellini. I'm an attorney <clears throat> and on my address is 70 a meditation lane in Lancaster, Massachusetts. And <clears throat> at the outset, I want I want to say this: um, just like Mr. Kovacs, um, Miriam wants to be a good neighbor. And so, as I go through this, and I, I won't be long, and of course, Miriam will be here to answer any questions that the board may have or, or anybody else. Actually, um, I I want to say, and, and Miriam wants to say that of course she wants to be a good neighbor too and um so th this is uh, these hearings are always difficult i know they i know they are because i was a selectman for nine years in a town well east of here some time ago in a past life so um i, I sat on boards and, and listened to these hearings too so i know how difficult they can be and and uh i commend you for for, for doing the job you do um i i do i, I i'm i'm gonna talk about the statute just briefly. But the reason I'm saying what I'm saying now is I don't want you to think that as I talk about the statute and address the letter, that in the end, we are anything but um, wanting to and willing to uh, do what, what Miriam can do to fix the situation to everybody's satisfaction, okay? So, but I have to point out, first of all, uh, Mr. Chairman, that uh, section 157 of chapter 140 does say that uh, no dog shall be deemed dangerous um, if the dog was reacting to a person. I'm sorry, uh, you're fading out. If the dog was reacting to a person um, and was not grossly disproportionate to any of the following, and that talks about the dog was reacting to or defending a person from assault or attack. And I'm, I'm just pointing that wording out because I'm, I'm going to go through the letter just briefly. I'm, I'm going to address the four points because that's the, that's the writing you have in front of you. And I think I can be brief and explain what happened in each case. And then um, <clears throat> uh, I, I'm going to just turn over briefly to Brenda Bear, who's a dog trainer, um, to talk a little bit about dog behavior. And then, of course, I, I, we have a solution to suggest to the board. and and. Mrs. My, Ms. Meyer may have already taken the proper solution and would like the animal control officers and put on that, whether it's tonight or from coming through in the property. But with respect to the first situation that's mentioned in the letter, that was the Dion family. Uh, that was approximately six years ago. And, and uh, Shotzi in that situation 
um, you know, I, sometimes things happen and they're, they're unfortunate. And, and Shasi did in, in that case, uh, and number one in, in Mr. Kobach's letter, uh, have physical contact with another dog. And uh, that dog was injured. Uh, and Miriam um, then uh, contacted the, the dog owner, uh, paid the bill in full. Um, and after that point, there were no more altercations between that dog or, or Shotzi, uh, despite the fact that um, the Dion's continued until they moved out of town, I mean, uh, to a different part of town, to walk the dog back and forth in front of uh, the Meyer household. And there were no more incidents between Shotzi and that dog. But, um, you know, we, we do acknowledge that, that that happened and it would be wrong to, to say otherwise. Um, uh, with respect to the second uh, item that um, Mr. Kovacs has brought up, <clears throat> on that occasion, Shotzi was, was leashed. And um, Mr. Kovacs, although we don't mean to um, infer anything other than just stating the facts, didn't use to use the word attack. Um, in that particular case, um, the dog, uh, Shotzi, uh, she was on a leash uh, and being walked by uh, Mary Meyer's father. Now, there was a dog that, uh, that the two came upon and uh, Shotzi got excited and, and reacted and went towards that dog. Um, and as that happened, uh, Miriam Meyer's father fell down. Now, Mr. Kovacs uh, makes it sound as if uh, the dog was so strong that, that, that no human being alive could, could have restrained the dog. Miriam Meyer's father was 90 at the time and uh, frail. Never, nevertheless, he held on to the leash. The, the Shashi did not get loose and Shashi did not do anything uh, to that poodle. Um, and um, <clears throat> in fact, um, th that, that same couple, um, they're the ones that walk the dog every day by the house even now. So um, that, that couple, um, they, they parked their, their car right below uh, Miriam Meyer's property every day to this day and walk their dog uh, by the house um, apparently without a fear and without any further altercations or problems with, um, with Shotzi. Um, and I'm gonna to get to the, the fencing in, 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 in just a moment. And I'm almost through, Mr. Chairman, but um, with respect to the, um, the incident between um, Mr. Kovacs' dog, Toby, um, the first incident that he mentioned about, that was about four years ago. And what happened on that day was that Miriam and her children were playing at the far end of their driveway, uh, the end of the driveway furthest from the street. And uh, Shotzi was with them. And at that point, um, you know, Toby did come down, and that's Mr. Kovacs' dog, Toby, did come down across the property and then down the driveway into the area where the kids were playing. Uh, and Miriam was there too. And Shotzi did, um, uh, at that point, apparently feeling as if, and the statute talks about this directly, um, about disproportionality between uh, the fear the dog might have seen that maybe perhaps some of its people were going to be attacked. It, it, it did go after Toby. It, it, it actually did that. And um, th there were injuries, which Miriam, you know, offered to pay for, but that dog had come onto the Meyer property and down to where the kids were playing. And, um, you know, dogs do have fights, uh, Mr. Chairman. And, you know, was the behavior disproportionate to the fear that, or, or the, what the dog sensed? Um, you know, I, I guess I'd argue no, but, you know, um, bottom line is that um, in any event, um, what I want to point out really is that in Mr. Kovacs's letter, uh, when he speaks of that incident, um, 
and just like what will happen when I get to the next incident, um, he says, I screamed at the dog, meaning Shotzi, and hit him, and uh, the dog retreated. Um, the dog at that point, even being struck by Mr. Kovacs, didn't attack Mr. Kovacs. Uh, the dog retreated to its own property. But that incident did take place in just in, in that fashion. And then finally, with number four, on that day, um, from all that we can tell, uh, Shotzi was in its fenced-in area in the backyard, which the animal control officer has described to you. And there was a, a part of the fence that was not, I guess you call it broken. And um, Mr. Kovacs's son was in the backyard with a ball thrower throwing a, a, a ball for, for, for their dog. Now, one thing that Shotzi loves most in the world is chasing balls. I'm just saying that because what happened is Shotzi did uh, get, get through the fence uh, and went into the yard. Now, it, I, I wasn't there. I didn't see Shotzi's demeanor or make any observations about that. But what we do know is that Shotzi went into the yard and um, Mr. Kovacs's son uh, used the ball thrower to, to hit Shotzi, um, apparently fearing, in some fear. And, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not demeaning that at, at all. That's not an unnatural reaction. Uh, and, and at that point, uh, Shotzi, again, retreated to its own property. It did not attack Toby on that day. Uh, and it did not attack the son who, who, who struck him on that day. It, it retreated. And when Mrs. M Ms. Meyer talked with the son, uh, despite what may have been said by others regarding the attack on the dog, the son said straight out, and I think the you know, control officer may have heard this later on, I'm not sure, that Shashi didn't bite Toby that, that day. Um, not at all, um, and it it didn't, and Shashi didn't uh, do anything, um, and, and to to the sun, it Shashi retreated. Um, so, you know, uh, we agree that perhaps um, something, you know, that, that there's got to be some resolution. But I, I want to tell you that um, what. What uh, Mary Meyer did, um, and right away, I mean, this, this whole incident happened just after Christmas, um, and the animal control officer was at Mary Meyer's house on the 27th of December, which she's already told you, and they, and they had a, a long discussion about what might be done to make the backyard <clears throat> more secure. So, um, in fact, they talked about adding a chain, not, it's not chicken wire. It's not some flimsy uh, uh, fencing. It's, it's chain link fencing that uh, Mary Meyer had attached to the whole length of this metal fencing um, that surrounds the whole entire backyard uh, going from the, the corner of the house out along the property line somewhat, not necessarily exactly parallel to it, then back on the back to a, uh, a stockade fence, which the animal control officer uh, described for you. And then of course the rest of the yard's fenced in as well. So, and, and that was done at the suggestion of the animal control officer. So, and it was done because Miriam wants to be a good neighbor with Mr. Kovacs and, you know, wants to make sure that Shotzi does not, um, breach the fence again and now now shots you can't so um you know we do have um brenda bear here who is a dog trainer and has known shots since shots was a puppy really um and i'm asking her forbearance i know that you're on a time uh crunch probably I, you know but I'd like to, if, if you think it would help you, 
to have you hear Brenda just talk about Shashi's disposition, her interaction with other dogs generally, uh, and I think make uh, uh, an informative um, point about the difference between uh, reactive dogs and aggressive dogs um, within the sort of the dog training world, the way, um, you know, dogs behave. And so if that would help you, I would um, like to have her speak briefly, but I, I again, I, I'm sensitive. Uh, I know when I was sitting in your seat, I'd be I was sensitive too about time. I, I'm going to be sensitive about your, your time too, Mr. Chairman. So I'll take your, your cue, but yeah. we do have a solution that we think would would uh, maybe resolve this, but it's I'm willing okay. to do whatever you think best. Before we go right. to, uh, is it Miss Bayer? Bear? Bear. 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 I, I would just want to know, um, would Mrs. Meyer, Ms. Meyer, like to say anything? No, <clears throat> no, I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. That's She's fine. Very nervous. She's very, very nervous about what my that, I, I understand. I, I just want to make sure everyone gets a chance to speak. And right. um, Ms. Beyer, if, if you would like to go ahead. Yes, my name is Brenda Bear, and I'm from Harvard. And I have known Shotzi since she was six months old when Miriam and her family adopted her um, as a rescue. Um, I helped train Shotzi um, to do many things um, as she came from a home with an elderly couple um, that just couldn't handle a six month old puppy anymore. Um, she um, attends my um, dog social groups where she plays with multiple dogs, all different sizes. Um, I had a Papillon Russian toy terrier that was a 20 pound dog, as well as a Scotty that was 20 pound all the way up to, um, we had some um, um, large um, labs and Shotzi would play with all of them um, off leash and um, enjoyed running after the balls and they all ran off to the balls because they all love to play with that. Um, she, her, she loves to go for rides in cars. She's very obedient. You call her, she comes when she's ca called. Um, she's playful, she loves people. She greets everybody. Um, I would do dog training with her, um, meeting other people. And she's great with kids of all ages. Um, and adults. Um, she's just a happy dog um, and she is great with other dogs. And I do wanna comment on one thing that people do get confused with a reactive dog versus an aggressive dog. There is a difference. Um, all dogs have, react to different things in different situations um, and they want to protect their owners. They want to protect their uh, property, and that could be a small dog does the same thing as large dogs. So, um, but there is a difference between a reactive dog and an aggressive dog, and Shotzi is not an aggressive dog. She is a reactive dog. Um, but I'd be happy to answer any other questions if anybody has anything. I have a question. Uh, um, I'm going to have some questions from the select board first. Okay. Are there any questions? from the select board. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this, is, this is Stan and uh, is, is this the, my understanding is, is that the, um, the quote unquote accuser is re reporting some, some, some bad dog behavior. It, it, I'm assuming this is the first time this is, has occurred relative to reporting stuff to the town and the animal control officer. Yes, I believe. Okay. So I, I think this question is directed to Mr. Kovacs. Okay. Uh, and yes. and oh, we've, okay. we've recounted, we've, we've heard that there have been several incidents in the past but uh, it's only after this Christmas that uh, it was only with your letter was the first time the town was notified of them. Is that correct? That's correct. 
Okay. Is that your question, and, and Mr. Kovacs, ha have you spoken to the, the owner of the dogs prior to, prior to this? Uh, have you had interaction with the dog, uh, with the dog's owners relative to uh, uh, any issues you might have had with the dog? Which dogs? The dog in question. Okay, it was plural. You said dogs. No, the I'm dog so in question. The dog have in question. Any, in it, have you had have you had any conversation with the owners of the dogs prior to this? Prior to the December thing, yeah, of course. Before the December incident, of course, we've I've had uh, discussion with her. On how many occasions? About specifically about this. It was after the incident we had uh, when uh, Toby was um, injured from, or whatever, injured from the uh, last time. No, you, you mentioned that there were previous incidents. Have you had previous conversations with the owner of this dog? B about uh, about, before, oh, about before, the incidents before. with other people? No, no, I did not. Uh, so you My had, wife did, but I did not. You've had one, you've had one incident with this dog. And this, this took place around December of, of last year. Is that correct? That is correct, sir. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions, Stan, Jonathan? Uh, at Nothing? the moment, no. Okay. I, guess, I, I said I didn't, but I, I guess maybe we'll get to this, but I would like to hear um, um, from, the Meyer, you know, Miriam Myers or her representative um, about what their ideas are for um, improving the fence, improving the general conditions between the two properties. Okay, uh, sir. So um, <clears throat> what happened was uh, there, there, there is a, a metal fence that was always surrounded the yard. Um, and Shotzi, that's where Shotzi is when Shotzi's outdoors. Um, and so after the December incident, is it Mr. Keep? Yeah, Mr. Uh, Mr. Keep. So after the December incident, um, <clears throat> as I said, the animal control officer came out to meet Miriam Meyer. And I, I guess I should point out too that after that, that incident that was described when the ball was being thrown and so forth, uh, just as an aside, I think it's interesting to note that it was Miriam Meyer that called uh, the animal control officer before anybody else did. But in any event, um, when the animal control officer came out to the, the Meyer property, um, they, they had a, quite a discussion about the whole situation and the best thing to do. And uh, Miriam was very interested in making sure that she did the right thing with respect to uh, this whole situation. And so one of the uh, the main recommendation from um, it, it, that came out of the discussion, I think it was there was a back and forth about it. But the main uh, the main thing that came out of that discussion was uh, perhaps a, a chain link fence put inside and along the whole stretch of the the uh, the metal fence would then prevent there being any possibility of a breach, even if some of the fencing and it's all really in quite good shape there was one weak area i guess that happened the dog happened to find it on the day that went across and then came back home but now there's chain link fencing attached to the metal fencing so that fence can't be breached uh by by shotzi anymore and um and again that was responsive to uh, the animal parole officer um, who came out here and had quite, quite a conversation with, 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 with Miriam. And I think that, uh, so that, that's what, what was done. And, you know, I, if the board felt like the animal control officer should come out and inspect that, that, that work and can confirm that it's been done and done well and done securely, I think that should satisfy the board in terms of, uh, future breaches of the fencing area. Okay, does uh, this fencing go all around the yard or just along the property line with the Kovacs? Mr. Chairman, it goes all around the yard completely. The entire backyard is fenced in. Um, with this metal fence that's been added? The metal fence and the chain link fence 
okay. uh, uh, attached to it and as as tall as the fence is around to the top. And okay. so, yes, yep. So uh, what about the nuisance of, of the German shepherd just barking in the backyard? Well, you know, Mr. Keith, I guess I'd say this to that. Um, the, the two properties are very large. And I'm not trying to tell Mr. Kovacs where he should play with his dog. But the idea is that, you know, dogs see other dogs and dogs bark. Um, the dog doesn't bark um, incessantly all day long at, at nothing, okay? Um, you know, I, I didn't want to get into what Mr. Kovacs' dog does at times, but, um, you know. Uh, okay, but, you know, get to that. So, but to address the nuisance, Mr. Keith, um, what Miss uh, uh, Miriam Meyer is willing to do, in addition to the chain link fencing, is uh, to take another suggestion that the animal control officer and she came up with, which was to put a black, not non-see-through fencing um, or, or uh, sheathing or screening along the same fence. So the, the, the visual, uh, uh, the ability of the, of the dogs, the dog to see what's going on in the yard is reduced. Um, and perhaps that will uh, eliminate uh, Shotzi barking when the other dog is in is in the yard. Um, now, you know, often Toby does come across the property line onto the Meyer property, and I don't want to get into, you know, everyone loves their dog, so I, I don't want to get into that part of it. But she's willing to take that step, Mr. Keep, to to address the nuisance. I mean, she's trying to be proactive, properly reactive to the situation, and she's very very amenable to suggestions you may have, but she's willing to do that much. And um, she will do it, just like she did the chain link fencing. Thank you. Okay, at this point, um, I would let Mr. Kovacs speak again. Uh, but please, again, if you have any questions, please direct them to the chair and not specifically to, uh, yeah, address them to uh, me. Uh, thank you, to, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, it's, I listened to everything and it's wonderful and, and I appreciate everyone's uh, time and um, I just find it uh, the, a couple of things that just kind of uh, was strange to me from uh, Brenda um, that when you speak of reactive and aggressive, um, the dog went, went through the fence and at a high speed chased down my dog in my yard. And for anyone to say that's a reactive versus aggressive, I, I'm, I'm at a loss, but I don't, I'm not a dog trainer. Secondly, um, when, when an animal attacks and you hit them, even a shark, you hit them in the nose and they turn. Uh, so to think that, to say that the dog attacked, we hit the dog you know, pretty aggressively ourselves in defense, the dog went the other way because it was scared because it was chasing a 23 pound dog, a defenseless 23 pound dog, playful and a human being twice the size of the German shepherd defended the dog and therefore it turned. So I'm not a dog trainer. I'm not, I don't know anything about dogs. I just know, you know, some common sense that, if someone's chasing me down, that's pretty aggressive or chasing my dog down. That, that to me is aggressive. I agree that Toby went into the yard the first time. I get it. Um, you know, that was inappropriate. I, you know, it is not okay for the dog to do that. And uh, we didn't report it. We're at fault just as much because the dog went in there. So, um, but it did chase my dog that moment as well into our yard and continued to attack and chase aggressively after that dog while it was in my yard, uh, probably 150, 200 feet away from where the first, where that incident originally um, began. But um, anyways, I just wanted to, um, those two points, the reactive versus aggressive and the fact that it's, you know, it's, it's not a harmful dog if it 
turns away after being, uh, you know, after we defend ourselves and it turns away. I mean, I think it was scared of me personally. Um, but anyways, those are the two things. Thank you very, uh, Larry, thank you very much, uh, you. very much. At, at this point, I'd like to have the board deliberate. And uh, if someone, member of the board thinks it's appropriate, we can uh, ask questions of the animal control officer or some of the people who have spoken this evening. Uh, I think I will initiate the uh, board discussion. Um, there's, we've heard a lot about problems with Shotzi, but I guess I would have to say it's, a lot of it's been secondhand. So things that happen to other people with Shotzi, those people are not participating in tonight's discussion. There were no complaints made at the time. Um, and, uh, you know, both sides are ascribing motivations and explanations to the Shotzi, the other dogs, the other dog owners that we just have to, um, we don't know if those are correct because the, the people are, aren't, aren't, aren't here to participate. Um, I've, I personally have an issue with the fact that this was not reported when it happened because we've, we've been through similar situations in the past year. The animal control officer is trained and experienced in uh, asking questions and doing determinations of uh, taking pictures if, if it's appropriate or the police have, have taken pictures when it's appropriate. The animal control officer does a, an investigation of you know who was where, when, when did this get discovered, what was going on. Um, I, I believe that that's valuable information that we are lacking in this case. Um, clearly, um, I, I think there's, there's, I don't think there's any dispute that there, there has been one, at least one occasion where Shotzi got, and it doesn't matter if it's, it's uh, responsive or aggressive, the behavior's the same. And it's the behavior that we're dealing with, not the motivation. So it doesn't matter if, if Shotzi's asking out of, out of aggression or if she's uh, behaving reactively. Uh, the, the behavior was inappropriate in either case, and that's what we need to deal with. Um, I, do, I do recognize that it was Ms. Meyer that contacted the animal control officer first, and that it appears to be uh, both in, in, from what uh, her attorney says, and from what the animal control officer has has stated, that she is being proactive in uh, making changes to prevent the recurrence of, of a similar incident. So that's where I am at this point, and I invite the other selectmen to comment. Well, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. I mean, I, I can't I can't agree more with your statements. Um, I think uh, at this point in time, um, the fact that uh, Ms. Meyer is is taking some some steps to deal with the situation, and I also uh, at some point would like to hear from the animal control officer as to what her recommendations might be. But I don't think, at least at this point in time this situation has risen to the level of a dangerous dog uh, situation where we need to vote on that right now. I think uh, there's, a, there's a bit of, of um, information that, that hasn't been presented and the fact that you indicated that uh, a number of the, the items that uh, uh, Mr. Novak has, has presented were never reported. I think um, we should, uh, at least in my opinion, allow Ms. Myers to uh, institute whatever changes she needs to, or she's suggesting to make uh, and see where the situation uh, moves.
boost in that direction. So that's all I have to say right now. Um, I, I agree on not wanting to vote um, on, on uh, designating this dog dangerous. Um, I, I would like to hear from uh, Phyllis Tower, the animal control officer, mm -hmm. and also from Mr. Kovacs, just about what, you know, his response <laughs> to what's being proposed. Um, yeah. Um, well, let me point out that if we decide not to declare Shotzi a nuisance dog, or if we decide not to declare her a dangerous dog, this does not prohibit such a declaration in the future. I'm sorry, let me silence that. And should there be uh, a, you know, a nuisance dog, repeated barking, inter behavior that interferes with the enjoyment of your property, Mr. Kovacs, or if there's a, another more dangerous situation, I, it, it, there's nothing being said or done here tonight that would prohibit you from uh, reporting it and us acting on this again. Correct, I understand. So I, I want you to understand that. Thank you. Um, Phyllis, we would like to know if you, uh, what your reaction is to the changes being proposed by Ms. Meyer and do you have additional recommendations? Um, a chain link fence, um, I, I haven't seen it, obviously, I haven't been back. Um, a chain link fence is very sturdy. Um, I would be curious how it was attached to the aluminum fencing, that's the pool fencing that's already there. And I also aren't sure about how she's gonna get into the pool area. She mows the lawn and there's two different fence, uh, sorry, two different sets of gates that gets her in there. So I'm not sure what the chain link is doing, uh, how, how it's set up passing the gates. Uh, I'm just trying to see, think about both sides of it. Chain link is very sturdy. I would have no problem with saying that that was uh, appropriate fencing to hold the German Shepherd back. Okay. Um, and then we, um, all right. So I guess the open question there is, would you be going back to Ms. Myers' uh, home and investigating that? I can certainly schedule that with her. Okay, is that agreeable? Uh, absolutely, Mr. Chairman. Um, would love to okay. have the, doc, the animal control officer come by and, and look at the fencing. We're, we're, we're confident that it meet, will meet her. It meets her standards and it's so absolutely, yes. Okay, uh, Mr. Kovacs, um, Mr. Keep and the rest of us would like to um, just gather your reaction to those proposals. I, I think uh, if it's um, uh, the visual is is um, dealt with, uh, that would certainly be helpful and would cut down the um, the reactive or aggressive behavior we feel we see um, we we've experienced every day. Um, that would be helpful, and of course, uh, you know, a, a strong fence that's. Um, I don't think it can jump over four feet. Um, oh. So, um, other than that, I think it's those two things would be would be appreciated. Mr. Chairman, just to clarify one thing, I just wanted to understand: Are you going to, um, um, Ms. Myers? Are you going to wire a chain link fence to the aluminum, or are you installing new posts and a chain link fence? It's been it's been attached securely by wiring all along the, in other words attaching the chain link to the securely to the already in place metal uh fencing so there's actually two fences really if you think about it that way and it's securely attached top to bottom all along both lengths of the fence all the way to the stockade fence so it's it's double fencing really if you think of it that way mr keep but it's you you know the chain link is flexible so you've just wired that to the aluminum swimming we, pool fence. well we had a professional come in and do it as if it were being attached to whatever would normally hold a, a chain link fence which isn't actually as much uh 
uh, it, you know, metal or aluminum with a chain link fence. So it's, it, it is actually not as flexible because it's against a very hard surface, which is the aluminum fencing or metal fencing that it's up against. So it's really not flexible. That, does that make sense? I, I don't know if, you know. I, yeah, um, I'll wait for Phyllis to take a look. It, it sounds, sounds good. Okay. All right. Um, my question now is directed toward uh, um, Ms. Murphy, the town's attorney. Um, the selectmen has to have a consensus to, to not take any action this evening. Is it the appropriate thing just to call an end to this hearing or is there some other process we need to follow? Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd suggest that the board, now that um, if it's heard all of the evidence it wishes to consider and all the recommendations, then it would uh, move to close the um, hearing portion and deliberate and take a vote. And the uh, if the vote is to dismiss the complaint, um, then that would have to be a vote taken by the board in order to close out this complaint here. Okay. So do I have a motion to close the hearing? So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Roll call. <coughs> uh, Wysocki. Aye. Zikansky. Aye. Keep. Aye. Thank you. Does the board have further deliberation before we vote on this complaint? I do not have any further. Would someone like to make a motion to dismiss the complaint? So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Roll call. Wysocki. Aye. Heap. Aye. Sikansky. Aye. aye. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you very, very much, everybody, for behaving civilly. Uh, this is a very emotional and difficult situation. Um, I, I hope it, it continues to uh, resolve itself and, and everything works out well. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You, Mr. Chair. Next on the agenda is a recommendation to appoint David Gammons to the Cultural Council. Is Chris Sterling or somebody from the Cultural Council here? Yes, I, I'm here. Oh, okay. Yeah. It says Ed Sterling, but we're playing tag team. He'll be on here for the next- uh, All right, well, just <laughs> identify yourself for the formal record, please. Okay, I'm Chris Sterling. I'm the chair of the Bolton Cultural Council. Okay, can you give us a little background on Mr. Gammons? <laughs> Uh, actually, Mr. Gammon uh, approached Town Hall and volunteered to serve on the board. We, we are in need of new members. We currently have seven. Uh, we need at least five, and I think we can have up to 22 members. So he approached Town Hall, and uh, they gave me his contact information. Um, I contacted him, and uh, there wasn't enough time for him to become a member prior to our, our meeting on January 6th, but he did sit in on that meeting. Um, and that's the meeting where we awarded grants for the uh, 2022 uh, grant cycle. So he's from uh, Wheeler Road. Um, that's about it. You know, he... Okay. Um, do I have a motion to appoint uh, David Gammons to the Cultural Council? So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, uh, I will do roll call. Mr. Wysocki? Aye. Mr. Keep? Aye. And I vote aye also. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Good seeing you. Next is a discussion with the Cable Advisory Committee on the commencement of franchise renewal process. Just as background, I would like to uh, tell the board that the current contract expires in 2024 and the duration of the contract is 10 years. So uh, do we have someone from the Cable Advisory Committee to speak? I think we've got several members here. Is anybody gonna speak? I can barely hear you, whoever you are. 
<laughs> oh, Ed. Okay. Who you? Who did you want to? You wanted one of us to speak. Yes. All right. <clears throat> yes. Um, to bring a little bit up to date on, on yeah. what the advisory committee is going to do. Okay. And all right. Um, I was okay. I was the the head of the committee ten years ago, so I'm willing to speak if you want. I guess one thing that I want to mention is that what the what this process is not is going out for bids and trying to find a multi, multiple sources and competition for cable services because the process in the state doesn't really work that way. It's basically a monopolistic thing in which uh, various carriers have various towns, some of the larger towns have more than one maybe, um, but uh, a town our size is not in a position uh, really to, to go out shopping for the, the least cost uh, cable provider there might be. But what it does try to do is to get enough funding from, the, uh, from Comcast to continue to be able to provide the uh, access TV services and other things that might be needed in the uh, in the cable area um, to be provided. And there, one of the things we did before uh, that I'm sure would need to be renewed is uh, to get a senior citizens discount. Um, it's not major um, and it's needs based, but at least it's a provision that's there. Um, <clears throat> and so the so the idea of the committee is to sit down with the government people from the uh, from Comcast to uh, and, and to work out a new contract and to really talk with our neighbors, with our uh, with other towns and the way that that they have dealt recently with Comcast or whatever it might be, that whatever their providers are, to try to get essentially a fair deal for the town that gets us uh, in a better position than we were before. Um, and if there are any services that we particularly want for senior citizens or something like that, um, then it could, uh, could include some of those. Um, and so that's what, um, that's basically the process that we went through years ago. And that's the process that I would envision uh, going from here. Okay. So currently there are three members on the committee. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, Ken, it's yourself, it's uh, Bob Johnson and Daniel Cochran. Right. Okay. Uh, I believe there are positions for seven people on the committee and we have four applicants. Is that correct? That I don't know, that's on your side. Okay. Yes, I believe it is. I only right. know that Ed Sterling is because right. they have spent the last two days together, but, but I don't know anything about the other people. Okay, so I have that Ed Sterling of uh, Still River Road is a candidate. Uh, Jean-Pierre Van Steergem, I'm sorry, sir, is, uh, did I pronounce that correctly? You did very well, Jean-Pierre Van Steergem. No All issue. right, thank you. Thank you. Um, Francis Aubrey Mor Morgan of Golden Run Road and Jeffrey Larkin of Quaker Lane. Uh, have offered to be on this committee. Uh, would the selectmen, how would the selectmen like to proceed? Do you want to have these candidates introduce themselves? Would you prefer to just go ahead and vote based on the information that was uh, sent to us that, that they provided? What would the selectmen like to do? I'd, I'd vote them all in. That's fine. Okay, uh, could you uh, make a motion to that effect, please? Uh, I'll make a motion to appoint uh, four new members uh, to the uh, Cable Advisory Committee. Okay, and again, that would be Jeffrey Larkin, Francis Aubrey Morgan, uh, Jean-Pierre Van Steerdegem, and Ed Sterling. 
Um, Stan, did you second that? I will second that. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Roll call. Stan? Aye. Jonathan? Aye. And I am also aye. So I thank you very much for volunteering. Um, good luck. Good um, luck. You know, and just remember, call Comcast at like 5.30 and ask them what they're doing, okay? Um, if I could, Mr. Chairman, if I could make one more comment. Um, one of the people who I've talked with who is more than happy to work with the group uh, in both an information and consulting role is Nikki Magachi of the uh, Bolton Access TV. Uh, the operation of the station is very much affected by Comcast and the funding that we get. Uh, and she's well connected to other communities to tie us into what other people are doing and getting and understands the technology needs that we've got. And so we'll be working very closely with her as we uh, go through this process. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thank Nikki. You. Thanks, Nikki. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> how does look she do that without moving that her lips isn't face. that amazing <laughs> look at that smiling face they're so happy so it's, happy it's like one of those puppets you know you don't have to move anything you just hear the voice <laughs> it's just it's just wonderful <laughs> all right thank you thank you very much uh next on our agenda is an update from the uh to the select board uh, from our representative on the Regional Agreement uh, Amendment Advisory Committee. This is uh, a group of people from Bolton and other towns that are reviewing the regional agreement for the um, school system. And the uh, chairman of this, the lead person on this is Brian Boyle. So Brian, go right ahead. Uh, good evening, everybody. Welcome. Thanks so much, Mr. Chair, for giving us some time. Um, I just want to quickly give an update on where we stand in the process before going into some of the potential proposed changes. Um, so I do think that the RAAAC is getting close to finishing its substantive review. Um, but based on the fact that the RAAAC advises the school committee, so whatever we vote on will be submitted to the school committee, and the school committee needs to make sure that DESE approves it. All of that has to happen before a revised regional agreement gets before the voters of each of the three member towns. It looks like the timeline for that is now aiming for next annual town meeting in May of 2023, not May of 2022, as we had thought maybe a couple months ago. So with that um, note on process out of the way, I, I believe you all received the memo that I had sent that got into some of the potential changes. And I'll just briefly highlight those for the benefit of folks that are just coming to this for the first time. Um, one of the main reasons that the regional agreement needed to be revisited was this issue of the, the total number of members. And so the current agreement specifies that it shall consist of eight members, but because of the one person, one vote uh, principle, um, we wanted to build flexibility that allows the region that allows the composition of the school committee to be revisited based on updated census information for the member towns. So although the agreement will now specify that it presently consists of 11 members, if in 10 years or five years there were a change in population, the, the membership for each of the individual towns could be adjusted again, and that's kind of spelled out in a formula that the agreement links to. Um, so that's kind of the main, the main compositional change. Um, we specify some of the sources of powers and duties that weren't in the original agreement. We are, this may be of interest, I guess, to, to the board. At this point, the um, RAAAC is recommending a change to the provision regarding the location of schools. And so I think you might've seen in the memo we're deleting the provision that says that regional school district schools serving students from all district towns shall be located as near as feasible to the geographic and population centers. At least that's the recommendation at this point. The rationale is that we figure that geographic centrality is always gonna be a factor that's considered, 
but putting it in the agreement might hamstring the ability to be to you know to select a site that doesn't meet that particular criteria. So wanted to share that with you as a potential change. Um, another thing of interest to to the select board is that at the moment we have introduced language that would um, ask the school committee to to give quote due consideration to the financial constraints of Prop Two and a Half on the member towns when they're developing the budget. Um, and then we're also considering adding some language around information sharing uh, norms before the budget is made public at the hearing. Um, but that's still, I, the RCCC is still hashing a little bit of that out. Um, most of the rest of the stuff is, you know, it, it's more just being specific where there may have been ambiguity in the past, like about which exact enrollment figures are being used. Um, and then uh, the audit advisory committee provision in the regional agreement hasn't really been discussed in detail yet, but um, I know both of the other Bolton reps on the committee are here. You may have questions for them. There's been a suggestion that we introduce uh, more of a calendar for the process that the audit advisory committee should follow and also potentially require a regular uh, forensic audit. Um, so that's kind of the highlights. Uh, I tried to be brief to give you time to ask any questions that you might have. And again, we do have both Dr. Mary McCarthy and Lorraine Ramosco here if you have questions for them. Okay, thank you. Um, Lorraine, do you have anything you'd like to add? Not a lot. Um, thank you very much though. And thanks, Brian. I think the, the thing I'm mostly concerned about is the audit advisory having seen several over the years, a couple of groups go through the process. It was kind of cumbersome and they weren't really clear exactly what their role was. And these were people that were really capable of getting things done for us. But more than that, the, I think the forensic audit is something that was discussed and having a regular cadence to it. Um, because I think um, it was discussed a couple of years ago when we went through the last one as a, a regular cadence only because there are sometimes habits that groups of people kind of slip into and, and not everybody on the board is um, a financial expert. Uh, and also when a new superintendent comes in, they don't necessarily know what they're inheriting. So if they have an opportunity to have a, a, um, a little more of a deeper dive and it's not that expensive, it will help, I think, well, some of the concerns and the fears. Um, it's just another way to open up the coffers um, for the community to be able to see what's going on. Okay, yeah. thank you. Makes sense. Mary, do you, do you see the other uh, significant issues before the committee? Um, I, I really don't. I, Brian did a great job and, and Lorraine added to it. What's really interesting is that in our work, and we've looked at other regional agreements, nobody else has an audit advisory um, I'm in favor of the of, of retaining the audit advisory and looking at it and making it as Lorraine's talking about um, more clear. Um, I think that perhaps it was our penance um, for what went on in the um, district finances, and you're well aware of that back in the you know like um, the early two thousands, early two thousands. Yeah. So, <laughs> in in fact, um, the people at um, Desi. The, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education were a little bit like, you know, what is this? Uh, however, the audit advisory is advisory to the school committee. And, um, and, I, and I think we can shore that, that aspect up. And that's the last part that we need to review. But I, I want to thank Brian and Lorraine and all the people who have been serving on the RACCC. Uh, it's a great group. Um, diligent work, and uh, we should have it um, pretty soon for Good. school Good. committee. Okay. Are there any questions from the select board? Um, no, not not for me right now. I mean, I think it would be helpful to have the details on on what the room was and what is being contemplated, you know, in front of us, so we can review that. Uh, I do believe we should have. Uh, while B B Brian is correct, I mean, I think it's, it's, we need to take our time and probably it's good for 
uh, a vote for the towns in the 2023 ATM, but I believe we should probably look to have some public hearings uh, with the citizens of Boulder because that 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 is uh, they need to vote on that at an ATM, and I think we, we need to give them uh, a clear picture as to what's being contemplated, what's being changed, uh, what's being added, deleted, et cetera. And I think uh, we should have those those hearings when at the appropriate time when the document is ready to uh, to be presented to the folks. Okay. And and that is that is part of the plan that there would be a public hearing. And so at this point with an, an extended, more extended timeline, that could actually be in the fall and to have um, public yeah. hearing so the public would, would see that and then be able to get the feedback from, from the public. Yep, that's right. Absolutely, yep. That's great. One, one of the things that surprised me uh, was that for a town to enter or a town to leave the school district, is a vote of the school committee and not the three towns. And I was wondering how that compares to other districts. Is that common or is that somewhat unique to the Neshoba group? So we're, we're recommending a, a change to the both the withdrawal and the admission procedures because um, right now in some ways, I think the current agreement is, puts us a little bit out of step with some of the other regional agreements we've looked at. Um, and so we're trying to make it more of like, if there's gonna be an admission or withdrawal, there's like comprehensive district involvement in that decision. Um, whereas previously it could just be one town plus a majority of the rest of the school committee, but the other member towns may not have as much to do with it. Um, and and the, key, the key difference is that in the, revised version that's being proposed, um, a withdrawal or an admission would require that the whole regional agreement also needs to be reviewed for potential amendment because, you know, when you're a three member district, the loss of a town or the gaining of, of a town does change everything. So you may want to look at everything with fresh eyes. Okay. All right. That sounds good. All right. Well, thank you very much. We look forward to uh, seeing the finished product and learning more about it. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Okay, thank you for thank coming. Thank you, everybody. Tonight. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Mary. Thanks, uh, Lorraine. Um, next up is the town administrator report with your town administrator, Don Lowe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'll start off with the regular COVID-19 update. Um, as I had hoped, uh, we're seeing some very positive trends just to uh, uh, give some perspective, I, although I think you're already aware of these numbers, but uh, on January 13th, the town had 90 new cases. On January 20th, uh, we had 80 new cases. Our, our number today that uh, as uh, posted for January 27th is we have 32 new cases. So the number of new cases have dropped significantly. Um, this, state positivity rate when we were at our peak was about 23.3%. The positivity rate reported today was 9.48%. Um, and as of January 20th, the vaccination rate for eligible residents is over 97% and 68% of eligible residents have received a booster shot. Uh, I would also like to note that the uh, uh, Neshoba Associated Board of Health continues to hold vaccine and booster clinics weekly, and that information can be found on the Board of Health coronavirus information page on the town website. Uh, and as I segue into um, one of my next uh, uh, topics, I would like to point out that when Congresswoman Trahan was in town today, um, for the uh, celebration that I'll reference in a minute. Um, she noted that of the 37 communities that she has in her congressional district, Bolton's vaccination rate was the highest of any community in the district in excess of 97%. Uh, so that was, that was great news to hear. Um, it just re reaffirms um, you know, how successful Bolton has been in that area. 
Um, before I move on to the uh, uh, the ceremony from earlier today, um, just one brief grant update. Uh, several weeks ago, um, I wrote a grant application uh, to apply for a grant for uh, uh, to help e educate staff on uh, cybersecurity awareness, and uh, the town has been awarded that grant. Um, I have started. Uh, I've done pretty much all the pre-work for the administrative portion. Uh, it's going to be uh, pretty much a year-long effort. There are different different ways that you could do it. I chose for a, a year-long effort. Um, um, we've got 23 people, including myself, who will be involved in the training. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting started on it. Good. Sounds um, very good. Congratulations, Tom. Thank you. And it, it, it also should help us with our Maya uh, insurance. We, we should get credit for that training and it should have a positive impact on our insurance rate. Um, finally, I would just like to mention that we did have the Forbish Mill Road Corridor Revitalization Ceremony this morning at 1030. Um, I think the temperature, I was told the temperature had risen to 14 degrees by the time we started. Uh, it was wonderful to have uh, Congresswoman Trahan there Representative Hogan, um, Secretary Keneally, all three members of the select board were there, which was great to see. I really, everybody appreciated that. And we had a nice turnout overall. Um, I think uh, 14 degree weather can only help move the speaking portion along, which it did. Um, and, uh, but I thought, I, I thought it went well. Uh, Representative Hogan and Congresswoman Trahan were certainly pleased with the turnout. And um, I just wanted to acknowledge uh, and thank the, the three select board members for, for attending. Thank you. So um, unless any of you have any questions, I, that's all I have for this evening. Yeah, Don, I just wanted to follow up on Congresswoman Trahan's um, comment about uh, the infrastructure bill and the money that will be coming to the state and hopefully to Bolton. And uh, so I just wondered if we could come up with a list of projects that we might be putting forward for those monies. I would like to, uh, but first I need to see the details. The further, the, the detailed announcements haven't come out yet. Uh, as uh, Congresswoman Trahan referenced uh, two, two weeks or so ago, I participated in a Zoom meeting that she had for the rollout, and it was basically the announcement of what's coming in February. But we were told that the details would be coming in February. Um, okay. One thing that is exciting is that there uh, it was stated that there will be money uh, meant specifically for rural communities. So certainly we are a rural community by anybody's definition. Uh, so that, that I can't wait to see the details on that. Uh, there would be money uh, targeted for schools, but I don't know what that means yet. Um, and infrastructure. So there, there's going to be an array of things. I think we're going to have some nice opportunities there. And I'm really hoping that um, by the end, well, hopefully by the February 17th select board meeting, I'll be able to give you an update on that. Great. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next up is select board biz select board business. Are there any public service announcements from members of the select board? Yes, as I do occasionally, um, when you go up to the transfer station and you're dropping off your bottles and cans, I still see a lot of bottles and cans that have uh, deposits on them going into the recycle bin. There is a uh, small shed at the top of the hill when you come into the uh, transfer station. That's for the Boy Scouts. Uh, they really would like to have, if you're going to get rid of your soda cans and any other bottles and cans that have deposits, drop them off at the Boy Scouts uh, shed at the transfer station. That is the main source of revenue for the Boy Scouts in this town. And it is greatly appreciated that if you do that, we would we would uh, be very happy with that. I mean, I see lots of beer bottles, soda cans, and whatnot, but, but 
separate them out and drop them off. It's not that big a deal. Uh, the other thing is, while I applaud the fact that we are one of the highest towns in, in the state of Massachusetts, or at least in Laurie Trahan's district that uh, I have gotten the vaccine, we still can do better. So uh, you need to get the vaccine, you need to get the booster. So please, please do that. That's all I have to say. The, the only thing I want to say is, uh, you know, it's it's just scouts now, because it's um, it's not just oh, scouts. Anymore. Oh, that's right. That's right. It, I, I, I I you know having you know being from a scouting family and having a scouting family, you know, I, I want to make sure we all recognize the changes that have taken place. So exactly. thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I, uh, I'll, uh, next time I do that, I will, I uh, will be more correct, but uh, okay. you, you understand the, the intent. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, next up is the approval approval of animal control officer designation 2022 forms for Phyllis Tower and Pamela Johnson. Those are included in the uh, packets that were sent. I believe all we need to do is vote on um, these designations. Is that correct, Don? Yes, that, that is correct. I will move that, Mr. Chairman. All right. All those in favor of designating uh, Phyllis Tower and Pamela Johnson as animal control officers, uh, please signify by saying aye. 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 Roll call, uh, Stan Wysocki. Aye. Mr. Keep. Aye. And I will also agree. So it's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, next is a request from the town planner, Valerie Worthries, for approval of the intermunicipal agreement extension for making the Connections Microtransit Program. I could not do that in one breath. Um, so moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Roll call, Mr. Wysocki. Aye. Mr. Keep. Aye. And I also agree, thank you. We need to approve bills and payroll warrants, W22-15 and W22-15A. Do I have so a motion? Moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Mr. Wysocki. Aye. Mr. Keep. Aye. And I am along, agree also. Uh, we have minutes. I thought we were going to have minutes, but I don't have the specifics of them. I, I believe we have minutes, Mr. Chairman. I believe they were, um, I, I believe we got the responses back, but Jenny um, has those responses and she's unavailable to join us tonight. So I suggest that they be deferred to the next meeting. Okay, that would be fine. Um, in that case, our next uh, item on the agenda is to enter executive session. Pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, for purpose number three, that is to conduct strategy with respect to collective bargaining, as the chair finds that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the board's bargaining position, for the Teamsters Union, local number 170, and for the Bolton Police Union, local 286, IUPA, AFL-CIO, to approve executive session minutes, the board will return to open session uh, solely for the purpose of adjournment. Um, I, I take that back. Um, no, the board will return to open session for a possible vote. Do I have a motion to enter executive session? So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Roll call. Wysocki? Aye. Keep? Aye. Sikansky is I. Okay. Uh, we will. I will go ahead and start to move everybody session. over. Okay. Oh, not many. Um. 
John, does Bolton Access TV get moved over as well? Yes, they do.
<laughs> oh, Ken Cleveland may come back. He usually does. Ken uh, Cleveland, yeah. Uh, Ken, Ken, how are you, Ken? And Nance? Back in now. Nance? There is one. The only other name on there is the um, the kiosk here at Town Hall that Phyllis was using, but I know she's not there. She's left, so no. okay. I'll just leave her over there in the waiting room. Okay, okay. so that's everybody. We're 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 back live. Correct. Um, um, before we go to a motion, I, I just want to ask uh, Don, um, <clears throat> I believe we all need to come in and sign that uh, document for Valerie. Is that correct? Yes, you do. Okay. Do we yeah. need to also sign the animal control officer designation form? Uh, it just says supervisor, but I don't know who that is. It's actually the select board. So supervisor, so supervisor would be the chair of the select board. All right, so I've got to sign that one. All right. Okay. Um, in open, now that we're back in open session, um, do I have a motion to um, approve the memorandum of understanding with the Teamsters Union Local Number One Seventy? So moved. Second. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, Mr. Wysocki? Aye. Mr. Keep? Aye. And I am also in favor. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Mr. Keep, roll call? Aye. Mr. Wysocki? Aye. And I am also in agreement that it's time to end the meeting. <laughs> Kristen, Don, thank you very much. Everyone thank else, you. Have, have a good, good night, night, everyone. Good night, everyone. That's Take right. care. Right. Good night.